Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to give you my favorite 15 cheap watercolor supply hacks. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and ding that bell so you won't miss any of my free watercolor tutorials. The first hack I have for you is a free water bucket solution. And of course you can use any old yogurt tub or spaghetti sauce jar you have, but these are awesome. These are the containers that tofu come in, very similar to the ones mushrooms come in. This one's neat because you have two different buckets because you want that when you're watercoloring to keep your paints fresh. Um, but there's also nice little ridges in here that you can clean your brushes with. What you want to have is one bucket for clean water and one bucket for dirty water. As long as you always clean your brush in the dirty water, your brushes will stay nice and fresh and your colors will stay vibrant and that way you don't have to empty your water that often. Also, it would be really hard to tip this over, making it a really good solution if you have kids. For a bonus tip, if you have children, you can get dual um, water food bowls at the Dollar Tree that are for cats and dogs, and those would be great for spill-proof containers for kids, um, if you think they might be able to spill this over. But this is just a great solution for a water bucket, and it's free! If you need a place to keep your paint, look no further than your recycling bin or your makeup box. I used an eyeshadow box to put my paints in and now I have a tiny little palette to take on the go. You can also use day of the week pill organizers for this. Just make sure whatever you use is fused on the bottom, like you wouldn't want to use a fish and tackle box if it had the little dividers that came out or your paint could seep underneath and get mixed up. My next tip is to use an old credit card or gift card. Just cut it up so you have some interesting shapes and it makes a wonderful painting tool. I use this tool in this painting here to create these rocks and I'm going to show you how to do that. So all you need to do is once you've painted an area, and this could be a flower petal or it could be a rocky coastline, it doesn't really matter. You just need to have wet juicy paint. Then you can use your little credit card scraper to scrape veins in your paint. You can even use it to push and scrape your paint around. One credit card will give you many options for uh, different edges that you can make. My next DIY tip is to make a rubber band brush. All you do is gather up a bunch of rubber bands and secure them with another rubber band. Then what you can do is dip them in your paint, and generally I'd use a larger palette for this, but I'm going to use this right here because that's what I have on hand. And then you can use that to tap on bushes and foliage on your painting. And you just rinse it off, very easy to clean. The next thing that you can make for your watercolor painting is some cut up sponges. And what you want is one of these cellulose sponges. You can get at any a department store or supermarket. And you're simply gonna cut some different shapes. You can do rectangles, um, you can do wedge shapes. I have a bunch that I have been using for probably about 10 years and they still work fine. So say you wanted to paint some bricks, you could wet your sponge, probably wet it in the clean water, and you could pick up a few different shades of paint. I'll get some brown and some red. Tap it on the roof of my palette here. And I could stamp on some bricks or some rocks if I wanted to, just for a, a subtle look or you could use it to stamp some foliage on a tree. I'm just gonna make a little upside down tree here for you. Tree trunk. And then you can just stamp on your foliage. And I like the kind of rough, um, rough cut ones for that, or you can even fold it in half. And I'm just gonna sponge in some greens. And you can get a really natural look without trying. If you happen to have some sea sponges on hand, those work great too. And while you're in the kitchen with your kitchen sponges, grab some plastic wrap because that makes some really interesting textures on your watercolor paper. To use your saran wrap, and it'll give you a beautiful texture like this, all you need to do is have a really wet wash of watercolor on your paper. So I'm gonna wet my paper and just throw in some color just for the sake of, um, of example here. You want to make sure you have quite a bit of color if you want to have a dramatic look. Then you want to tear off a piece of saran wrap or plastic wrap. And you're going to press it into your wet wash. And you can see you start to get these little pockets of color and it kind of looks like frozen uh, window pane glass. And after this dries, I would leave it overnight until it's completely dry. Um, you remove it and then you have something that looks just like this. 
While you're in the kitchen, if you have some canning wax, you can also use a white or clear crayon or an old candle. You can use this to make um, a resist on your paper. So if you want to keep the, um, say, waves or sparkle on a um, landscape wet, it works wonderfully. I'm just going to put some blue over my wax so you can see what I mean. And so your waves will stay nice and bright. And I'm going to show you an example of how I use that on a recent watercolor tutorial on my YouTube channel. For my waves here, I first applied wax, just like I showed you at the table. And then when I painted over it, I didn't have to worry about any of my waves. Another fun supply that's right in your kitchen is salt. And I'm going to show you how I use salt on a lilac painting. These textures up here were made by sprinkling salt into the wet paint when I began painting them. I'm going to show you that technique in my sketchbook. I'm going to begin just by dabbing on some color. you got to make sure that it is nice and juicy so that you'll have something for your salt to react in. If you're going to use an eyeshadow palette or something small like this as your paint palette, you will probably want to have a... Um, a tile or a ceramic dish or a plastic margarine tub lid or something like that to be able to mix your colors on. So just kind of keep that in mind. I typically would not paint um, directly from the palette like this. But I got a lot going on on my table and I don't have a lot of extra room. So after you have a nice wet wash of color, all you have to do is sprinkle on your salt. I like to use like a kosher salt or a coarse salt because it'll give me um, ununiform uh, sprinkles. So I'll have some big ones and some little ones. And you can kind of see that the salt reacts already and um, starts to absorb the water. And that's what gives you those really cool textures. I also prefer to sprinkle it on from my fingers so I don't get too much where I don't want it. My next two hacks come from the bathroom, an old toothbrush that I've thrown through the dishwasher so it got nice and clean, and also some rubbing alcohol that I put in a tiny little dropper bottle. These make wonderful textures on your watercolor paintings. To use the toothbrush, simply get it wet in your water and pick up the color that you would like to speckle. This keeps you from having to spend money on a speckling brush. They're not that expensive, but still, why spend money when you get something that works just as well for free? And what you do is you load it up with some inky paint you drag your finger across the brush, and there you can have a beautiful speckle. If you have really wet paint, you're going to get bigger spatters, and if you have drier paint, you're going to get finer spatters. So you can experiment with it and get the look you're going for. The next thing I want to show you is rubbing alcohol on your paint, and this gives you a really neat effect. And again, just like with a salt, you want to have a pretty wet wash. And I'm going to just grab a, grab a little bit of ultramarine blue here. Now alcohol uh, disturbs the surface tension of the water and gives you cool bubbles. So this would be really fun to use if you were doing um, like maybe barnacles on a whale or you wanted to do bubbles or something like that. You just get a very unique texture there and it's a lot of fun to experiment with. Often when you're watercolor painting, you want to tape down your paper on all four sides to keep it from buckling. Plus it gives you a pretty border when you're done, kind of like I have on this painting right here. But if you're not careful and you get cheap tape, sometimes it can rip your paper. Here's a tip for getting your tape a little less sticky so you don't have to splash out eight bucks a roll for the super duper low tech tape at the hardware store. Rip off what you need and then you want to stick it to your clothing, stick it to your jeans, anything where it can pick up some lint and then you'll be able to tape down your paper without your paper ripping when you go to remove it. And there you just saved yourself tons of money because you can get your tape at the dollar store. If you don't want to bother taping down paper, blocks are a wonderful invention. This is my favorite brand, it's the Arches, and I just love to paint on this because I can paint all the way to the edge and my paper stays nice and flat. But these are spendy, so instead of spending tons of money every time I want to paint, I learned how to make my own and I actually have a tutorial on how to do this and I'll link it in the video description. But basically you use whatever paper you have, you cut them all to the same size and you cut a piece of cardboard to the same size. Size. And then you stack it all up and you glue around all four edges, just leaving a little gap where you can fit a palette knife in for removal. It's kind of complicated to explain quickly, so I'll refer you to the tutorial in the video description, but it's going to save you a ton of money and it is a dream to paint on. 
Next up, I have two tips for masking fluid. One is to take your masking fluid and pour it into a smaller container um, for travel and also to use up so you don't have to keep opening up your main jar of masking fluid. I've had this for over 10 years and it's nice and fresh still. When you use masking fluid on your brushes, you have to be careful because it's a little damaging. It's basically a liquid latex and it's pretty harsh on your brushes. So what I do is I pick a brush that I don't care too much about and I load it up with soap. You can use any liquid soap or you can wet your brush and just draw it across your favorite bar soap. Any soap is fine for this. This is going to protect your bristles from getting damaged from the liquid latex. Then when you load up your brush, you want to make sure that you only get the tips of the bristles. You don't want to get it into this metal part. That's called the ferrule and if, it, if your fluid gets up in there, it could really ruin your brush. So I'm just going to just get it on the tip of my brush and then I'm ready to use that on my watercolor paper. And if you've never used masking fluid before, what this does is it makes a barrier um, on your paper so that you could like uh, do little highlights such as a sparkle in somebody's eye or a highlight on a glass. You could paint that out before you do your painting and it would remain nice and crisp white when you remove it. It's important to know what brush you use for masking fluid so you don't accidentally grab one of your good brushes. So what I recommend doing is either painting the end with some nail polish or using some decorative tape to um, identify it. This is also a great idea if you go to classes because um, oftentimes students will all have the same materials. So what you can do is pick a roll of washi tape. There are so many pretty options. Wrap it around your handle. And then I like to take a little piece of um, clear tape and go over it as well just to keep it from coming off because washi tape isn't super uh, super strong so that will keep your brushes identified so they don't go home with anyone else and also so you don't pick up somebody else's brushes by mistake and that was 15 cheap watercolor hacks. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope it helps you stretch your art supply budget a little further. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and check out the other videos that I have on my channel. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified anytime I have a new video. I have hundreds of free watercolor tutorials here on my YouTube channel and I also have a couple classes if you need a little extra attention. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.